When it comes to camera ergonomics, there's been sort of a carcinization happening in the camera space. Everything is evolving into a box. And I have mixed feelings about that. On the one hand, it's great to be able to strip your camera down to basically a sensor in a box and rig it on a gimbal, on a crane, on a drone, what have you. The dream of a modular camera is as enticing now as it was 10 years ago when RED introduced DSMC2. The freedom to choose what accessories to use and how to build out your perfect rig is desirable, so it's no wonder that almost all of the camera companies followed that trend. But on the other hand, there's a whole bunch of problems that come with this design approach. The first major downside of the box cameras is that the real cost is obscured. By the time you kit out your $6,000 camera into a somewhat shootable package, it really becomes a $10,000 camera. They either come with no accessories at all, like RED cameras, or with crappy accessories that you're going to replace, like my Sony FX6 here, and I'm not even sure what's worse. The only camera companies that have robust accessory ecosystems are ARRI, RED and Kinefinity, believe it or not, and Blackmagic Design to a lesser extent. And the stuff that Sony and Canon are shipping with their cinema cameras frankly gives me pause. It's hard to believe that in 2024, top-level cinema cameras like Sony Burano or Canon C400 are shipping with 3.5-inch 720p displays. How can you shoot 6K, 8K from a display this size of a business card? It's a bad joke. No self-respecting professional will use that as their main monitoring device. And the camera manufacturers know this. They treat these accessories as an afterthought because they know they're gonna get replaced. Yet they don't really follow up on that logic. You're expected to use an external monitor and yet most of these box-style cameras don't even have any power outputs. So by the time that you add a battery plate and some kind of power distribution, your box is not a box anymore. It's a Franken rig. And all these D-tap cables, dummy batteries and power adapters are prone to issues that can throw a wrench into your shooting day at best and fry your camera at worst. When it comes to handheld operation, all these box-style cameras force you into this awkward shooting style where you cradle the camera in front of you. And that's not conducive to stable shots or comfortable operation. Real handheld implies a shoulder rig, and all these box-style cameras suck at that. Because for a shoulder rig to work, you really need two things – a longer camera body and an EVF. We already established how almost none of these box-style cameras come with a proper EVF, and you need it, if not for the superior monitoring experience, then just as a third point of contact. But even if you do get a third-party EVF, the weight distribution is still wrong because these cameras are too short to properly offset the weight of the lens with a battery. If you balance the center of mass on your shoulder as you should, you end up with the camera behind your ear with all its controls inaccessible. So you end up holding it in front of you with most of the weight in your arms, which defeats the purpose of the shoulder rig. The holy grail of camera ergonomics is Ari Amira, that is hands down the best camera ever made for shoulder operation. And I think the only cameras that follow that path are Sony's FX9 and Blackmagic's Ursa cameras. The downside is of course size and weight, which makes these cameras not gimbal friendly. I might not agree with that, but choosing between ergonomics and size and weight, the market keeps voting for smaller and lighter cameras. All the downsides we've discussed so far make me think if I even want a box-style camera. Because inevitably, any camera is going to require four things. Some kind of monitoring solution, some kind of wireless transmission solution, some kind of remote control solution, and some kind of lens control solution. There is basically nothing that you would put on a camera that doesn't fit into one of these four boxes. Am I a joke to you? And that's even before the camera package goes on a tripod or on your shoulder. And with these box-style cameras you end up with four different devices, one for each, all requiring their own separate cabling and power. You have to build out and break down your camera package every time you go out on a shoot. You have to turn 
all of these devices on and off one by one. You have to use a separate interface or a mobile app for each and each one can be a point of failure. A forgotten cable here and there, an unexpected firmware update, some kind of app glitch. Captain Murphy is never too far behind on a film set. And if you look at it like that, the box style camera design seems to create more problems than it solves. And that's why I'm seriously considering an integrated approach, kind of like what DJI is doing with their Ronin 4D camera. When 4D first came out, I immediately dismissed it as a funky looking chicken head camera, but the more I heard about it, the more I thought about it, the more sense it made. If I'm gonna put all that stuff on a camera anyways, why not just have it all there, tightly integrated, no wires, single interface, a complete camera package and with a 4-axis stabilization to boot. I had some personal hands-on time with Ronin 4D at CVP's London showroom and I have to say, it's incredible to use. It's like you are on a dolly with a focus puller just floating through space with all the controls at your fingertips. The stabilization is out of this world, the LiDAR focusing is magical and the ergonomics are surprisingly great. The more I think about this integrated approach, the more it makes sense, especially for DJI who have all the pieces of the puzzle – cameras, gimbals, image transmission systems and lens control systems. And they've been relentlessly updating this camera, which inspires confidence. I was so sure that they would abandon this as a one-off weird experiment. But I was wrong. In the last couple of years they put out new expansion plates, extension cables and even the whole new 8K sensor module. In fact, they are actually delivering on the promise of an upgradable, expandable modular camera that RED promised 10 years ago with DSMC2. With constant software updates from DJI, the camera has seen a tremendous uptake in the last couple of years, getting heavy usage on A24's epic Civil War. It's not a perfect camera by any means, for starters it puts a serious limitation on your lens selection and the choice of codecs and recording modes is not that great. But you've got to applaud DJI for thinking outside the box and bringing out a truly unique camera. Did you get that? Outside the box? Like the box? No? Okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm not trying to sell you anything or flare up your gear acquisition syndrome, it's just that as a camera nerd it's interesting to me to see how camera design philosophy evolves over time. I feel like nobody has yet solved camera ergonomics. Cameras are still kind of awkwardly shaped and too hard and slow to use, but at least we are moving past the box style camera craze and trying some new ideas. That being said, it's pretty incredible what kind of bang you can get for your buck these days, especially in terms of image quality. To the point where the differences between the cameras seem to come down to workflow rather than the image coming out of the camera. In fact, just speaking for myself, I'd be much better off shopping in lighting and grip department than looking at new cameras all the time. Thanks for watching.